Hello, now a lot of people have been asking me to do more videos on helmets, so here you go, we're going to do a video on helmets, and I thought to make this more interesting because I've already shown most of my helmets in my helmet collection video. What I do in this video is go over some of the types of helmets and what they're used for. So I'm going to start mostly 20th century, but we are going to cover the PIF helmet first, so a PIF helmet, P-I-T-H. Um, this really offers no head protection whatsoever, I suppose maybe very slight knocks it might protect you against, but PIF's kind of like a cork type material. And PIF helmets are basically designed because it was sort of a breathable material, so often you see these as sort of an African explorer kind of helmet. And um, obviously they're generally famous for colonial forces for most European nations. This is the British style one that's quite high. Also very similar to the policeman helmets, the traditional policeman helmets you can see in the UK. They're sort of this sort of shape. Quite a big helmet. Uh, there's some which are much flatter, um, and there's various different designs of these. The North Vietnamese or the um, Viet Cong also used much smaller PIF helmets during the Vietnam War. A lot of time, as I said, really offers no head protection, but it does sort of keep your head cool. As one of the designs for it, it was designed to look formal, and it's sort of breathable PIF because of the material it's made from. I'm sure there are other reasons for its use as well that you can probably look up. And as I said, because this is sort of 20th century. Uh, and forward, I'm not going to be covering all the medieval types of helmets. I don't actually sadly have any uh, one to one size replica to a decent degree medieval helmet. If I did, I'd show them in the video as well and just sort of say, let's jump back a few odd hundred years. But obviously, throughout lots of ancient histories, there was um, me sort of melee warfare helmets for battlefield use, which were designed to protect their users' head from sword blows and things like that. Um, as I said, not included in this video, but PIF helmets, this is kind of the earliest we're going back. Very famous for colonial type stuff, but Piff Helmet is what a Piff Helmet is. Let's just spin around so you can see it. Um, it's a, uh, you know, more of a fashion helmet, I guess, in a lot of senses, than a practical helmet. Now let's cover two things in here. Quickly on the right is an East German officer's cap, but I'm not really going to consider caps in this video because they're not helmets as such. They don't have any protective qualities. Uh, so on the left you can see an East German M56 helmet, the famous traffic cone helmet. From this angle you can't tell it's as much as a traffic cone sort of shape, but steel pot helmets as they're often known, or just steel helmets, were invented for shrapnel protection. Not bullets, but shrapnel. Some had very basic ballistic properties. This East German M56 helmet is probably the best of the bunch in that regard. Um, it has the sort of free floating design with a bit of foam in there to cushion your head. Um, but for the most part, these helmets were designed so when bombs went off grenades and shells and shrapnel was flying or bits of brick and mortar and things like that, uh, the point was you're, you didn't get brain damage or um, a fatal brain injury from shrapnel going through your skull. Um, like I said, they offer almost no protection from bullets. Some might stop pistol rounds at a distance, like this one would due to its shape, but they were not designed to protect users from bullets. Um, so, as I was saying, their primary role was really uh, shrapnel injuries, because it, at the start of World War One, most nations had soldiers in sort of berets and sort of just cloth hats, even if they even had hats on, uh, which offered no shrapnel protection whatsoever due to the very high rate of casualties from shrapnel to the head. Um, most nations then developed steel helmets. Um, obviously, the Germans had the Stauhelms. Uh, Britain and France, Britain had the sort of Brody helmets, very famous, also known as the Tommy helmet. America used that during World War One as well. France, I can't remember the name of it, but it's the blue helmet with the sort of ridge along the top is also quite famous. But obviously, steel helmets were used pretty much until about the 1980s by most European and sort of American powers and the Russians and everybody else. The point being that steel helmets worked very well for what they were to protect from shrapnel, but when things like Kevlar became available, people started saying, hmm, could we actually design a helmet that would protect the wearer from bullets? Now we come to ballistic helmets. These are helmets actually designed to protect the wearer from bullets. Now, they're not going to do a very good job of it against rifle bullets. This is the mistake people make where they think, you know, at less than 100 yards you could be shot with a battle rifle or an assault rifle, and this will protect you. No, it will not. Um, the bullet's probably going to go cleanly straight through and uh, ventilate your helmet and your head. Uh, but what these do offer protection from is pistol caliber bullets at varying distances and again at very long ranges rifle bullets where they've already lost a lot of velocity uh, so there's less foot pounds of energy when they hit these it'll protect you. This is a British Mark VI helmet, the first generation of it. Uh, these are about as basic as a ballistic helmet as you get because they're made of ballistic nylon not even Kevlar. Um, ballistic nylon what was used to be used in um, flat jackets until Kevlar superseded it because Kevlar is basically for the same size and weight it's more efficient but ballistic nylon was like the early Kevlar 
both designed by DuPont. Um, these were, you know, much better than having a steel helmet. Now, as I said, these are better than steel helmets, but like I said, it really does depend. The American Pasca is probably the most well known of these helmets and much better. This one, sort of, uh, the Mark VI helmets have a lot of faults. One being, if you look forwards too much, uh, the helmet tends to go forward over your eyes. Apparently, these were very bad if you were laying down with all the gear on for blocking your vision. Um, but, you know, they were at least a step up from the old steel helmets Britain used. Again, not the best thing in the world, especially the Mark VI helmet. The American Pasca or M88 helmet um, was, you know, a much better leap forward. Again, it was like a German style helmet just made out of Kevlar, really, because that was a winning design. But these helmets are what they are, and they are fairly good. Um, you know, I was like saying a step up, but ballistic helmets are a very wide range of helmets. Ballistic helmets are pretty much the standard everywhere now. Maybe there's some, some countries that can't afford Kevlar helmets or whatever for reservists, but for the most point, now Kevlar helmets are used instead of steel um, or ballistic nylon helmets because they do offer much better protection. Britain has since, I think there was Mark 6A it was called, which was the version Britain did of this in Kevlar. Most of these helmets you see for sale though are the ballistic nylon ones in green. Um, I think the Kevlar ones were in black, not green. Um, but they were a stopgap until the Mark 7 helmet, which is Britain's Kevlar helmet now, which is much better than this one, which I may buy at some point. Um, and then I think the Mark 7 is now being phased out for another helmet. Again, probably didn't need to be phased out, but, you know, the military-industrial complex is probably always bribes and other stuff allegedly happening. Um, but yeah, ballistic helmets are kind of the modern thing now, just because, as said, as well as offering shrapnel protection, they do offer some protection against firearms. Um, to a degree, you know, we're a certain distance with a certain projectile, it's always likely to stop it. Whereas with a steel helmet, you know, you were really lucky if it did stop a bullet, but they weren't designed to protect you from that. Okay, riot helmets. So what's a riot helmet? A helmet made of a material, either steel or plastic, thick plastic, designed to stop impacts to the head. And now, a common misconception with all helmets is that they're meant to fit really tight. They're actually not. The reason is, when there's an impact to the head, you want the helmet to move, because if the helmet moves, less of that force is going into the head. If the helmet was really tight to your head, your head would take the full force of the blow. Which is why having a helmet that's full of loads of padding is actually worse than having a helmet that sits looser. Right helmets sit fairly loose, as you can see, even with that done up. So, you've got your visor on here. Some have steel visors like a cage, others have like a polycarbonate visors. As you can see, there's air rifle impacts in here. I've shot this with um, pistol crossbows and uh, air rifles and it stopped all of them. I wouldn't think it would stop a full-size crossbow. Uh, there was a neck protector I've taken off because the neck protector stops this working properly with certain body armours. But the point of these riot helmets, again, is not to stop bullets. Um, whether or not it would stop a bullet, I don't know. Again, it's not going to be as good as a ballistic helmet, but at enough distance, shrapnel and bullets might be stopped by this. But the point of a riot helmet is obviously to protect the user's head from injury. So they're designed to be fire retardant as well. Um, I did briefly set this one on fire with only lighter fluid, not petrol. And that burnt off without causing any damage to the helmet. But the point is they're designed to stop the user's head being set on fire or suffering burn injuries. And they're obviously to protect the wearer from um, sort of bricks and things coming forward and stones. And sort of being hit in the face with clubs and knives and things like that. So these are basically melee and um, sort of what a person can throw at you and do to you without a firearm kind of helmet. And right helmets are very good for that. Um, if anybody was buying a helmet for some sort of shit hits the fan event, you know, um, urban violence kind of threat, I think a riot helmet for most people would be a lot more practical than actually getting a military helmet. However, um, the best of both worlds is some ballistic helmets like the Mark VI I just showed actually do have the mounts on them for riot visors. So that means you could actually have a polycarbonate riot visor on your military helmet, have a helmet that gives you much better head protection in terms of incoming threats, but also offers the same protection from whatever comes in to hit the visor. Now, the problem is, if some military helmets sit more snugly to your head, you're more likely to get a broken neck or brain damage or whatever else if something hits you really hard in the head. But, um, you know, as you can see, a helmet like this sits rather loose, but for what these are, these are very good. As I said, they're helmets for different roles, so you're not going to expect some of the helmets to do other roles because they're not designed for that. They're designed to do very thing, different things very well. And obviously... The steel helmets for good reason are now being replaced by Kevlar helmets because it doesn't lose any advantage against shrapnel but gives you much better protection. 
but for example riot helmets aren't going to be using riot cops aren't going to be using military helmets and military police aren't or whatever going to be using riot helmets but they might have a riot visor on the normal helmet for sort of um civil conflict type stuff uh, where they might be against people throwing stuff at them where they're not going to shoot to kill um you know for that reason but helmets like this are designed to protect the head from basically people hitting you and throwing bricks at you uh, or molotovs not actually protect you from bullets but right helmets obviously for that role are very good if you were to have a medieval combat hel helmet sort of evolved into the modern age this is what a riot helmet is like medieval helmets they fit loose to prevent um, head and neck damage when the helmets hit hard and obviously they've got your deployable visor for when people are trying to hit you in the face and lastly for this video we have tank helmets now tank helmets are basically just to protect the uh, user's head from injuries from banging it in an armoured vehicle or a tank um, so they're basically just a cushioning helmet. They work a bit like riot helmets, but they're generally a soft material because you're not on purposely going to hit yourself, but it's to prevent yourself being cut or hit in the head. So the tank helmet, as you can see, basically is just a cushioned helmet, a bit like some of those rugby helmets or American football helmets. I suppose American football helmets are more like riot helmets, but you know what I mean, the rugby helmets uh, that are designed to protect the wearer's head, sort of like the cowls from um, impact. Uh, you can see there's big bulky ear pieces on this as well, that's because there are headphones built into this and it has throat microphones as well on the cables, but in lots of tank helmets, not all of them had radio equipment built into them, but the whole reason for tank helmets was basically that the person wearing it was less likely to suffer a head injury if they knocked themselves on the tank, fell over in a tank and things like that. So a very good piece of personal protection equipment. Um, you know, a construction helmet would probably do the same job, but that's what tank crewmen had. And obviously the ear pieces on the helmet as well, I mean being tightens the ears, it does drown out some of the tank's very loud engine noise. So they work a bit like ear defenders as well on some models. So the whole point of a helmet like this was just simply to protect yourself from head injuries if you're inside a tank. Now, another kind of helmet I don't have any, but I'll just bring them up quickly, are paratrooper helmets. Traditionally they weren't offered, made to offer really any sort of ballistic protection or sort of shrapnel protection. Originally paratrooper helmets were pretty much so when paratroopers were jumping, I mean some of them might offer shrapnel protection, but the point was that when paratroopers would jump they were designed to prevent the person injuring their head or neck sort of when landing, uh, so they would fit slightly differently than other military helmets and sort of, yeah, their primary role was, you know, protection from jumping injury to the neck and head. I've seen some pictures where paratroopers actually have the jumping helmets and then they have combat helmets on their equipment separately. So when they're actually then in the field, they can switch to a um, military-style ballistic helmet. Apparently some modern paratrooper helmets now are now made with more ballistic-type materials in mind. I suppose that's the wonder of something like Kevlar. Um, you can now make a helmet of the same size and weight that gives much better user head protection. But traditionally, um, you'd see lots of paratrooper helmets that are different than the main military helmets, whether it be in World War II with Falsham Jaegers and then things like the M40 helmet, or if it was just simply things like... Um, you know, other helmets that look different than the other military helmets of the day, but now I think they're becoming more of a sort of uniform thing where you can put the same level of protection on a different design helmet. So there you go, as I said, this is mostly like a military and conflict style helmet video. Obviously I've not got motorcycle helmets in this video or bike helmets because they're not really relevant or construction helmets, but hopefully this will give you the idea of some of the sorts of different military helmets you have, some of the 20th century sort of forwards.